What's up, gangsters? How about part four of this thing? Uh, I feel like it's actually kind of maybe going better than I thought uh, at the beginning of, of part three. I know I was whining about how, the, you know, how much fun this is not to try and, uh, and do the video for this, but I feel a little bit better about part three after editing it. Um, you know, this is, this is a challenge, um, and, and I haven't really tried to do this before, so hopefully I, I don't do too bad. I, I want to not only try and, and give you guys the how and the why of the mechanics involved, um, but also to kind of give you a little bit of, of insight into how I think and how I work, um, my artistic process. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll never do that again, I promise. Um, anyway, I, you know, there's some things that are just hard to explain because as I keep saying over and over again, a lot of it is just, is just by feel. But hopefully what you'll see with this is how I sort of strategize and the way that I, I sort of, of look at the overall subject in terms of the storytelling and how I sort of map it all out. Um, anyway, hopefully that comes through and uh, it will continue to come through in this part. Let's get back to work. Okay, so it is now Tuesday. I think I'm a week into this thing. And uh, yeah, ready to get some stuff done today. But uh, a couple of housekeeping things first because in an effort to make this thing as useful as possible, I am trying to, to uh, you know, deal with questions that I get in between episodes. And one of the questions that I had was uh, regarding my prints. And the question was something like this. Uh, you seem to trust the color fidelity of your photo printer. Or is it that you're just not too worried about the color accuracy? I think I'm repeating that correctly. And I had to chuckle because um, I do have a photography background and photographers ha who do prints have, uh, shall we say, a complicated relationship with their printers. And the first answer is, uh, fuck no, I don't trust any printer. Um, that's just because that's just the reality. Um, the printer is pretty much only as good as you tell it to be through the use of color profiles and understanding your papers and all those kind of things. Now, having said all of that, there's also a point where both as a photographer and as a model maker, I go, okay, cool, good enough, looks good to me. Uh, because uh, the truth is, you you will not ever get perfect color reproduction. And I know somebody out there is going, well, yeah, but, you know, color calibration of your monitor, and I'm just going to shake my head and go, yeah, no. Yeah, anyway, that's a whole other subject that I'm not going to get into. But when you're dealing with a print on a modern printer, of a 70 year old photo that came off of the internet after being scanned who knows how many times or whatever. Yeah, there's no way to know what the exact correct color is supposed to be. So all you can really do is trust your eye. The other thing to point out is that I am not trying to duplicate any of the exact things that I see in these photos, color or otherwise. What I'm trying to do is create approximations that are that are nice that are nicely similar. You know, okay, like this thing here on this hatch or around this hatch. I'm not trying to duplicate that exactly because I'm not building that exact aircraft. I don't want it to look exactly the same, but I want it to look authentic, and so I'm using this as an example to try and produce that. Then, of course, there's the fact that, yeah, with these black and white photos, yeah, nobody cares about the color. So, that's that. Um, another thing that I wanted to sort of show you and, and point out is, okay, so now we are a week into this, and some of these oils have been on this piece of paper for all of that time. I think this black right here was what I squirted out there on the very first day a week ago. And um, so just to sort of address 
uh, some concerns about, you know, because you hear this a lot, oils take forever to dry. Um, and it, that comes from the actual painting world where people are applying oils to canvases. And typically in much, much larger volumes than we deal with in our, in our uh, environment. Uh, so there's some truth to it, but not for us, okay? And you can see, all right, this Mars black is basically like rubber. It's still somewhat open, not completely cured, all right? But you also see how, how big the pile is there. Um, so, I mean, after a week, that shouldn't be a surprise. This uh, chunk of, of it here, that's pretty, pretty dry, crumbly. This uh, burnt umber over here is a little softer, actually, than the Mars Black is. Still has some amount of spreadability to it, although not much. This raw umber right here, it has only been there since like last Thursday, so it is, you know, unsurprisingly pretty, pretty spreadable. Uh, this uh, pile of titanium white is the most spreadable of all, and I think it's probably been there since Thursday or Friday, so still totally usable, but it you know, it's got a bit of a skin on it for sure. You know, these areas here where I spread it thin, relatively thin, and, and blended it, those are all fully cured. Rubbery, hard, imper impervious to mineral spirits. Okay, nothing happening in any of those areas. So hopefully, you know, that, that helps you understand kind of the, the uh, reality of, of, of oil paints uh, and, and how fast they dry. Um, I'm not used, trying to use any of those anymore. I have started a brand new palette for the work that's fixing to happen. But before I do that, um, one of the comments uh, was, hey, can you show us the overall picture here? Um, because, you know, the views of the effects up close are good, but what's the overall context? And that's a, that's a totally fair question because um, it's really easy to get micro hyper focused uh, on, on the actual uh, effect and not ever step back and, and take a look at the, at the whole thing. And it's really important to do that because in addition to the effects being well executed on an individual basis, it's also important to, for the thing to be, you know, balanced overall. So that when you look at it from a distance, you know, you're getting, you know, again, a balanced effect is really the best way to put it, where nothing is just jumping out at you like crazy. So that's that's where we're at with that as far as the whole airframe goes. Um, I feel like it's not uh, really enough for a, an overall judgment yet, but... I'm happy with what's going on so far. Okay, now, even though I feel like I'm happy overall with what's been happening here, there, there is a little more I wanna do. Uh, so, I mean, on the stuff that I've already done. So, I've got some material out here, and um, if I can just get myself arranged. Oh, um, okay, so what I wanna do is I want to make these panels a little darker overall. I like what I've got going on so far, but I would like to just make them a little bit uh, a little bit darker. So, what I'm going to do is load this brush up with thinner, and I'm just going to come over here and uh, start gathering up some of this material 
and I, and I don't want much because what I'm basically going to be doing here is is filtering. So I'm going to be pretty 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 conservative with this. Don't want it to be. I don't want a lot of of pigment in there at all, and I'm going to just work that around directly on that panel let it kind of do its thing and I'm working right to the edge and, and, and moving quickly because it, it you know even though the work that I've already done there is is days old and, and well cured um, it is still possible to disturb that with mineral spirits and I, and I don't want to do that so you can see it's getting a little a little dense in, in some of those areas so I'm gonna just pull that back over here and just distribute that around so that that whole area gets gets darker all right and, and then I'll just you know I'll just let that rest let the mineral spirits flash off and then come back and have a look at it see what see what we think because this is a process that I can repeat multiple times okay so that's pretty good let's go back over to the other side that's about all the time that's required and you can already see the effect hopefully you can see already that that has darkened that whole area quite a bit which is what I want um, but I, I, I'm going to just let it sit there for a little bit because, it, you know, I'm not totally sure that it's exactly where I want it to be and I'm not in any kind of a hurry because, again, I can come back and do that filtering as many times as I want to. And in the meantime, what I also want to do, I want a little bit more speckling, but I want to try and get some larger speckles. Um, you know, I want something that looks a little bit different. So, um, and I'm gonna focus on doing it in this area right here, along the walkway. So, just going back to this crappy old brush and loading it up with mineral spirits and just coming over here into my oils and just just to be clear so I'm, I'm getting this directly off of my palette and these oils have been sitting on this palette for I don't know 10 minutes uh, whatever it took me to, to you know about however long it took me to talk to you guys up at the beginning of the of the clip uh, and I want these speckles to be pretty light. Maybe I'll get, you know, some of this stuff in there with it. I don't want them to be um, necessarily lighter in color tone as much as I just want them to be very translucent when they go down. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that I have a lot of thinner in my brush and again I'll be sneaking up on it okay so that's pretty I've got my brush pretty loaded up let's let's see what we get it's good I'm getting some really nice fat irregular splatters like that that's what I want I don't really want these that are way out here, but I, you know, I might, I might leave them. We'll see. But I'm flicking the brush pretty hard at this point, um, and, and remember, you know, this looks pretty dramatic, but but it's always much more dramatic when it's wet. So, you know, the challenge is to judge how dense it needs to be based on, you know, the way it looks when it's wet 
so that it dries correctly. So this is what I want. Big fat splatters like, like this that just land and then flow and wick and do, do weird things. So that's pretty good. We come back over here. I blew on these to dry them out a little bit, but you can see, you know, what's left. Most of them have, have pretty well disappeared. I mean, even this crazy one that I got out here is, is, is just really not even there that much anymore. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just clean that one off right now because I already know that it's not gonna be a survivor. So that's not bad, but I think I could use more in this area over here, so. Do it, do it again. Speckling is, speckling is fun. It's real easy to get over, get carried away and get over speckled because they are fun. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's go back to the other side and see what's happening over there. You can see what we were left with. Um, there's, there's some good stuff, but most of them disappeared. There we go. Now we're getting some action there. See, getting a nice crazy looking sort of pattern there. Big sort of like blotches. Those are cool. Okay, come back over and do some more of those over here. You know, a lot of this is just how hard you flick it. Okay, so this is not too bad, but in recognition of my future plan, okay, thinking a, a move or two down the road, what I intend to do is I want, I want this entire work and walk area here to be darker for two reasons. One, you know, it's getting dirt and crap ground into it from foot traffic. And two, if you've ever looked at flat paint that's oxidized and then been rubbed off, you notice that the oxidized paint is much lighter in tone than the, than the undisturbed paint underneath it. And so what I wanna show is that pattern. And I started building all that in, in my pre-shading, if you wanna call it that, black basing, my marbling layer, texture layer, whatever, when I was putting all these colors down, but I wanna, I, I wanna continue to emphasize that in this area. And so part of how I'm gonna do that, and I also show faded paint, is that in these areas that are outboard of this work and walk area, so out here, ailerons over the flaps, that I'm gonna do some oil color work where I uh, kind, of, kind of bring in some tones that, that help me make that look faded. But I know that for the most part in those areas, I don't, I'm not really gonna want the distraction of other effects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that whatever stray speckles I got out there are, uh, are taken care of right now. Might as well. Just get them, just get them, just get them done. So that's pretty good. 
Um, I feel I feel pretty happy about the way this is you know this area is coming together. I think I'm still probably not as dark as I want to be in here. Um, and there's no reason not to just do a little bit more with that since I'm I'm there. All right, I think I need a few more speckles right in this area here to kind of balance it out. If you notice, look on this side what the distribution is of the stains over there as compared to this side. And they don't have to be identical. There's no rule that says they do, but one rule that I do follow is if there's something about patterns that sort of, you know, catches my eye while I'm working on it, I, I deal with that immediately. So there we go. We'll see how that shapes up. All right, now, next thing. It's time for some exhaust stain work. I was going to say that until last, but I really did not even intend on doing all of this stuff on the top side of the airframe. Yeah, I was going to do all the stuff on the belly first because that is my normal pattern. Um, I, you know, I treat the belly kind of as warm up because, you know, if you fuck it up, it's less likely to be seen. But uh, I've got going on the top, and uh, so I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. So let's talk about the exhaust stains. Now, um, several people have asked me how, I've, how I'm doing these exhaust stains, and if you haven't watched uh, the acrylic ink video that I put out a few weeks ago, this is going to be important because this is a combination of, of effects. So what's typical with allied aircraft that used high octane fuel is a sort of multicolored exhaust stain um, because you'd get this sort of, of uh, sort of uh, dark coffee, uh, black coffee, real black, brownish black tone uh, as a sort of the base stain and then you would see and you would see that kind of around the edges of the of the pattern if you will and then more in the middle of the pattern you would see a lighter like tannish gray really light brown light gray type thing going on that is the result of the tetraethyl lead that was used to boost the octane you don't see it on all of them for sure, but it, it's common enough and I love it. I think it adds a lot of interest. And so what I did on these exhaust stains is these are all sprayed in acrylic ink. And just, you know, like I was saying, I built the base of it with the darker tone then, and let that, let that dry. Uh, then came back and put the lighter ash colored tone on top of it. And then I sealed all of that in with GX113. And now my, my plan is I'm going to put a third layer on there of yet a lighter tone that will all be oil work. So that's what I'm going to do now. And what I've uh, got going on here to, uh, build that, to build that color is I've got some of this... Um, ammo uh the abtylung 502 cream brown right here that is a really good start for that but it's too dark for what i've got going on here uh, so what i'm going to just do is i'm going to mix up i'm going to mix in some white and when i'm happy with that then we'll do the next step okay digging through the reference pictures because i want to show you guys what i'm after and i and i forgot i had this one this is why i'm doing all of that work around those uh hatches for the guns i mean look if if, if surely you can see with all of that tromping around and you know working with greasy hands and and whatever that you're going to get a lot of that and i could do even more i mean this is you know this is great but 
this uh, picture right here shows you what I'm talking about with the exhaust stains. Uh, you can see right here how you've got that lighter tone rimmed with the darker tone. So that's what we're going to be going for next. Okay, and this is what I like for that. This is, I think, at least a good place to start. This is, uh, again, this is, this is mostly white, but then I've got some of that cream brown, and you can see how much I've, I've lightened that. So, this is where I'm going to use basically the same technique that I used to create these stains right here, where I'm going to go after the paint being creamy enough to, to brush it on and, and get, you know, get it uh, pretty full, fully dense and then come back and blend it with the, uh, with the big magic blender. So hopefully I can get this uh, on, on camera. Okay, so you can see that what I'm doing is is building it, you know, really at, at, at a pretty heavy density towards the front and then having it trail or fade uh, out as, as, as it moves towards the back. So, let's see how that looks when I do this step. All right, now I'm trying to be really careful because what you don't want to do is get your fingers in any of the oil work that you've already done because you can, you know, you can rub it off, you can leave a fingerprint and obviously don't don't want that. It shouldn't be a problem for the stuff that's really well cured for a couple of days, but I'm not I'm not taking any chances. And and this is a pretty hard scrubbing process. So, I'm going to just work on this and then I'll show you what we get when it's when it's done okay who yeah, it looks pretty good. Pretty stoked about that. And there you go. You can see, you can see what we got going on there. It's a little, it's got a little, you know, just a little bit of a sheen to it because it's fresh oil. But you can see kind of the, you know, how the, how the density looks compared to what's already there. I would say that, you know, at least half of the paint that I, that I put on there is is gone. And that's, you know, that's pretty typical of what I want. Um, and I'm not super stoked about the way that it turned out back here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get a smaller brush like this that's a little more controlled. And go back here and scrub some of those out. Because I just want there to be just a sort of a suggestion of those stains back there. Don't want to get rid of them completely, but I also don't want them to look like afterthoughts. And I think that's that's pretty good, but I want to make sure it's good because uh, I don't want to have to come back and rework this whole area because I have other oil stuff going on right in here. Um, where I put some speckles, and also I forgot to tell you guys, yeah, 
I sort of cheated. And I'll show you how I did this. There's gonna be more of it. But if you look uh, right in here, you'll see that I've got this dark brown discoloration that, that runs right along here. That's basically a uh, fuel stain because it's, you know, uh, it's basically um, dripping, running off of, of the fuel filler, running down the side of the fuselage, and then collecting along this, this sheet metal, and then, you know, just weeping its way back towards the rear because of gravity. So that's what's happening there. And there will be some other places where I'm going to do some more of that. I mean, it's not like all this stuff. It's not super hard, but there we go. That's that's what I'm after doing on, on that exhaust stain. I feel good enough about that, uh, the way that it is right now, that I am going to choose to just step away from that. And now I'm going to do the other side and hope that it looks as nice. Okay, so the thing that I want to emphasize here is that that's really important is hopefully you, you notice the shape here. And this is a place where I see a lot of otherwise nice aircraft models kind of fall down and that's on the shaping of, of the exhaust stain. Um, it, you know, I, I'm fully on board with subjective artistic sensibilities, but the fact is if your exhaust stain just shoots straight out from the stacks, it's wrong. At least on any of these uh, aircraft where the exhaust stacks were anywhere near an airfoil. And the reason is pretty simple. I mean, it's all about it's all about airflow. Um, you know, the airflow obviously has to bend up and over the top of the airfoil, but that's an that's an effect that extends out a distance from the airfoil. It's not just contained at some kind of a boundary layer uh, directly on top of the wing. And you will see this characteristic shape if you really study reference photos. You'll see this characteristic. Uh, trailing arch um, and and how it starts depends on how far in front of the leading edge the tail end of the stacks is and then how far above it like on the, uh, the on the on the Allison engine uh, p40s you see like a lot of spitfires that the stain will start about halfway through the stack and so basically what that tells you, or the set of stacks, basically what that tells you is that that air is starting to bend clear out here and then travel up and over the wing. But on a, on a P40F uh, or an L that's got a Merlin engine, the nose is slightly longer and the tail end of the stacks is a little farther in front of the leading edge of the wing and you see this arch actually begins right at the tail end of the stacks but it's there you look at, at p40s you look at spitfires you look at mustangs they all have this characteristic shape and it, you know it's it's hard it's hard to achieve um, i forgot to mention that the way that i built the base of the stain and, and and got that arch in there i don't trust myself to spray that freehand there's definitely guys that can do it i i i, I can get away with it sometimes but what I do is I print, I, I go into Photoshop and I, and I take the same life size uh, artwork that I scanned and scaled from the instruction sheet. Same thing that I use to create the masks for the insignia and for the skulls. And I just draw in the shape that I want for the exhaust stain. And then I print that off and I cut out a couple of, of stencils that I will just loosely tape in place and I'll spray the base of the stain just very, very, very lightly. So there's just a hint of a ghost outline on there. And that then gives me an area to work inside of when I, you know, go freehand. I take the, I take the, the, the stencils off and then start working the area freehand. And it, it just comes out so much better and so much more controlled. And, uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it is. It's a lot of effort, I'm not going to lie, but I feel like that exhaust stains are just one of those things that really sort of define the look of these aircraft. And I get really obsessive about them. I love them. I love the, the tones and the visual interest and the difficulty of reproducing them at scale. And so to me, it, it, it's, it's, it's worth 
it's worth whatever energy it costs me to, to, to do it that way. Okay, so there we go. That's my first pass at that. I'm gonna come back here and just like the other side, I'm gonna scrub these in a little bit better. I'm always trying to be cognizant of the fact that even on the on the starboard side, you're gonna have ground crew who are gonna rub up against this some. Um, you know, on some aircraft, the starboard side is the working side, but on this one, and on most of them really, it's on the port side. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have less of the exhaust stain rubbed off on this side than I do on the other side. You'll notice I've got a little bit of a hard edge here. I mean, it's soft, but it's still sort of relatively hard. So I'm gonna just scrub on that a little harder, just to try to soften that a little bit. I want it to have the characteristic shape, but I don't want it to look, I don't want it to look unnatural. So there we go. Still have some sort of splotches back here that I'm not super stoked about. I think what I'm actually gonna do on a couple of those is just rub them almost completely down. And this is a, this is a dry Q-tip. That'll knock those most of the way off. And if I come back and look at those later and they're still too prominent, I'll just remove them completely. But I feel like I feel like I like this this look pretty well. But it's important to look at it, you know, back back away, look at it from a distance. I've got a little bit too much of a hard edge going on, right? Sorry, getting off camera. I've got a little bit too much of a hard edge uh, going on uh, down here at the bottom right here. So I'm gonna scrub that off just a little bit more. Um, okay, now one thing I also wanna point out is Okay, so this is ash, and it gets uh, rubbed off pretty easily, you know, as soon as some somebody leans up against it, you know, whatever the case may be, it, it's gonna get rubbed off uh, relatively easily. And um, so you can, you can create some of, of that look um, if you don't get enough of it just with the scrubbing that I was just doing. Uh, and now that I'm holding this up in a different light, I'm really super not happy with how this looks right here. So scrub on that a little bit. But you can you can get that look uh, with some with a with some mineral spirits. And I could come in here with a sponge and do some things to it. I could um, you know like on a on a Spitfire because you got the gas cap right here on top of the of the nose uh, what will happen a lot is uh, on the ground crew side you will see where um, there's streaks uh, running through the ash where the gasoline has basically washed it off from refueling and you can do that with mineral spirits by just putting some mineral spirits up above it and then just letting gravity kind of do its thing, maybe do some, some you know, get a little bit on the, on the tip of a brush and just drag it down through that. Um, that's, that's always pretty cool. Um, so, you know, there's different things that you can do there. But on this one, I am not gonna do that. Um, I am pretty, because, you know, like I said, this, th this has an oil tank up here and I'm gonna deal with some staining around that. There's, a, there's an oil reservoir underneath this little hatch, and so I'm gonna do some work with that, but I'm not gonna try to create the same sort of 
of runs and stains like I did back here uh, with with this uh, with this exhaust stain. Okay, so I mentioned making uh, some staining around this hatch right here where the oil tank is. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So for this, I'm, I've got this uh, Windsor Newton Series Seven miniature, and I've got some um, some real dark brown. Uh, it's it's uh, raw umber mixed a little bit of black. Uh, to just kind of create a real grody oil, dirt, mung kind of tone. And it's nice and soft, and I'm just going to get some of that directly on the brush. And I'm just going to start to paint that in around there. And I'm trying to stay off of the little hatch thing itself because it'll be flipped up and out of the way when these stains are, are being created. And I kind of want it to kind of come back here around the, the panel line there, get a little bit on that. You know, you can, hopefully you can, you, you're picking up on the fact that I am doing a significant amount of just drawing it in and kind of getting it where I want it. Um, and you can really control oils very, very precisely when you're working with them this way, where they're fresh out of the tube and you're, you're using a, a small brush Makes it really easy to put it exactly where you want it in exactly the quantities that you want it. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of carry it along these panel lines the way that I feel it would happen when the oil drips out and, and collects and just gets carried by gravity and uh, sort of just naturally does its thing. I've also got this little hatch here. We'll get a little bit going on around that. Okay, so now that I've got that drawn in and got it to pretty much uh, where I want it, it's back to the blending. You can see that's that's leaving it pretty dense, and I think I like that. I think I'm gonna probably just go with that that way. It's uh, it's pretty pretty dramatic, and I'm cool with that. But you could continue to scrub at it and get it to be just as you know, just as, as dense as you want. Now, I almost made a mistake. I forgot this brush had a little bit of mineral spirits on it because I had cleaned it out earlier and I almost ended up scrubbing away what I just did when I was really trying to just control it a little bit more. So you have to be careful with oils with which brush you pick up, you know, and just always be keeping in mind what's what you've been doing with that brush and what's on it. Okay, now I've got all of this here on the side and I need to do the same process with that. Just blending and softening. This brush is completely dry. So there we go. That's what I wanted. I like the look of that. You can see, you can see how tightly you can control those shapes right there. You know, you can paint that oil on there raw with as small a brush as necessary to be able to do it. So like you can just go right around little Zeus fastener heads, individual rivets. I mean, really, whatever you want to do. It's magic. 
Okay, I think I'm gonna call it good for this segment. Um, I know this is stretching out. <laughs> We're heading into uh, part six, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I hope you guys are, are, are seeing that this is the reality of, of doing oil work. It's not necessarily always going to take this long, it's just that this happens to be one where I'm throwing everything and the kitchen sink at it, so it's going to take a while. I'm definitely past the halfway point. <laughs> um, I've done just about everything that I'm going to do on the top of the airframe. There is one more big move to make and that's going to be doing some of the paint fading that I talked about there, and uh, I'm going to do that in the next clip. Um, and then I'll probably go back to doing some of the small parts, we'll hit the exhaust stacks, and uh, get started on the belly. So anyway, um, I hope this is proving valuable uh, and you guys are, are uh, you know, getting some confidence to try your own oil work on your aircraft models. As always, if you've stayed in uh, on this deal, I definitely appreciate it. And as always, much love.